Hey, what's up guys? Hop here. I am out in the Big Green Nightmare with a Wolfpack Armory Disruptor 556K. That's right, this is a 556K can on an 8-inch barreled AR pistol. Good idea? Eh, we'll get into that later. Wolfpack Armory sent me a couple of their pre-production or early production suppressors to check out before they officially launched their entire suppressor lineup. We've talked before about their Plan B compatible mounts and muzzle devices, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the entire Wolfpack Armory Disruptor suppressor ecosystem as it is right now, what I think about it so far. We'll also talk about some other fun topics like the sensibility of suppressing extremely short 5.56 guns, and also talking about minimum barrel length restrictions on suppressors. Longevity, durability, how well are these things actually going to do when you run them all the way down at their minimum barrel length restriction, or even below that. Is it safe? What will it do to the can? I guess we're going to find out as I keep shooting this thing. Wolfpack Armory made one crucial mistake when they sent me these suppressors. They did not specify a minimum barrel length restriction. So in my mind, that means I'm free to do whatever the hell I want. So we're going to do whatever the hell I want. Anyway, stick around. Should be an interesting video. Let's get into it. Today's video was brought to you by our channel sponsor, Venture Surplus. If you like to go outside, they've got stuff for that. Military surplus clothing, sleep systems, tactical gear, and rations. Everything you need to spend a night in the wilderness without totally hating your life. You might still hate your life afterwards, but that's really more about you than it is about Venture Surplus, isn't it? Check out the link to Venture Surplus in the video description and use the code provided to save 10% off your order. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Venture Surplus for their continued support of this channel. Let's get back to the show. Wolfpack Armory is a company out of West Virginia that mostly does ARs. I really like the way they put together a rifle. They also make suppressor mounts and muzzle devices in the Plan B ecosystem. We talked about some of those in the video I did about the Plan B interface. More recently, they decided to start making their own rifle suppressors with the Disruptor series. The Disruptors are a very simple classic silencer design. It's a welded stack of conical baffles. At the back, they have 1 and 3 8 by 24 hub threads, which is overwhelmingly the most common thread pitch in the suppressor market, and they have a removable end cap compatible with some other end caps on the market. Their pricing is similar to the YHM Turbo and Resonator or the Otter Creek Labs Polonium, which are other mid-market cans without fancy flow-through tech. I think the main selling point of the Wolfpack cans is that they come with Wolfpack's Plan B compatible mount and muzzle devices, versus the Polo, which only includes a direct thread mount, or the YHM, which includes a garbage Phantom QD mount you have to replace as soon as you get it. As for the swappable front end cap, those never seem like much of a selling point to me. I've talked before about how you're basically going to commit to one end cap and leave it on forever. But also, the aftermarket for suppressor end caps is not good. Most of them are proprietary secret thread pitches, so compatibility is a crapshoot, and there just aren't many options out there. The ones that do exist are never in stock. I've heard a rumor that the ATF wants to reclassify end caps as suppressor parts, meaning you wouldn't be able to just pick them up from Psycho's website. That may be why more companies haven't bothered to standardize end cap thread pitches and start making new designs. I think of suppressor end caps as kind of a deprecated part of the market. Even if they were easier to get, they still wouldn't be that good. Anyway, Wolfback Armory and I are now best friends, so when they started working on some new cans, they sent me two of them to fuck around with. The Disruptor 30, which was an early production sample with a solid welded end cap, and the Disruptor 556K. Because they are my friends now, I can't review their stuff anymore, so I decided to just straight up ruin one of their cans to see what it can take. I did some side-by-side -side comparisons of the 30 and the 556K on different AR barrel lengths, and then retired the 30 to my PSAK 104, which is where it will live for as long as it can manage to not die. I haven't been as nice to the Disruptor 556K. This is a lightweight K-can with no fancy blast mitigating tech in it, so I put it on an 8-inch barreled 556 AR pistol. I also used one of their recessed direct thread adapters to make the package even more compact. What we have here is beyond a worst case scenario. There are some nuggets of conventional wisdom about suppressors that always get repeated. One of those is about how the muzzle device you attach your suppressor to affects both performance and wear of the suppressor itself. In theory, using a muzzle brake is the best from both a sound performance and wear standpoint then a closed tine flash hider, then an open tine flash hider, and direct thread is a distant last. 
So thanks to the recessed direct thread mount, we've brought the first baffle of the suppressor even closer to the muzzle. And there is no muzzle device to act as a sacrificial baffle or do any redirecting of muzzle blast at all. We are also running below the threshold of minimal barrel length for this can. Let's see how it's looking after a couple hundred rounds. Stand by. Shit in the bed. Turns out it looks pretty bad. As expected, the blast baffle shows accelerated wear, and notice the erosion is very uniform. We can compare this to a video from Reddit of an Aero Lahar 30 subjected to 100 rounds of 5.56 on a 7.5 inch barrel. In this case, it was mounted to a three prong flash hider, and you can see what's referred to as jet cutting on the blast baffle, which is caused by the focused gases from the muzzle in the pattern of the tines on the flash hider. Pretty neat to see. Now, as several Redditors and Aero Precision themselves pointed out in that thread, a suppressor is a wear item. You can't use terms like sacrificial baffle without acknowledging that over time this stuff is just gonna wear out. Let's talk about minimum barrel length restrictions and firing schedule. Wolfpack's website says the minimum barrel length for the 5.56K is 10 inches, but that is a recent addition. When I received these cans, and when I originally started the process of abusing the Disruptor K, Wolfpack didn't have the barrel length restriction in place yet. They didn't claim the Disruptor had no barrel length restriction, they just had yet to finalize it. We can compare that to other suppressors of the same caliber and similar price point. The YHM Turbo has a 10 inch minimum, the Otter Creek Labs Polonium has a 7 inch minimum, and the Aero Lahar is unrestricted. The YHM Turbo series has a perforated blast baffle made of Cobalt 6. Aero Precision has a standard conical baffle at the back of the stack, but it is made of Inconel, which should be tougher than stainless steel. The Otter Creek Labs Polonium is fully stainless, but it has a concave blast baffle design, which is pretty interesting. The Wolfpack Disruptor is the simplest from both a material and design standpoint. The blast baffle is a standard conical baffle made of standard stainless steel. My Polonium K spent a few hundred rounds on the 7.5 inch barreled DPMS Kitty Cat, as well as a ton of rounds on other hosts, and it still shows only minor erosion on the blast baffle. However, my Polonium K has always been used with a Reardon Atlas adapter and installed on Plan B muzzle devices like the Reardon R2 or the LPM Eclipse flash hider. So in theory, we're getting that blast redirection effect from the muzzle device, and there's also more distance between the muzzle and the blast baffle of the can. Compare the weld lines here. This is where the first baffle is on both of these cans. On the Disruptor, the baffle is conical and pointing to the rear. On the OCL, it's a flatter dish shape and pointing towards the front. So, a pretty sizable difference. Of all these suppressors, I'm pretty sure the most durable is the YHM Turbo. The perforated Cobalt 6 blast baffle seems like it's probably the most effective at tanking the gas and protecting the rest of the baffle stack. Then why, you might ask, does YHM have the most conservative barrel length restrictions? Because they don't do anything reckless, not ever. I think YHM knows if they say 7.5 inches, then some jackass like me will try it on a 6 inch and then send it in for warranty work and complain on the internet if they don't get their shit repaired. Alright, so what we've established here today is that what I'm doing is reckless and stupid. Especially because when you get right down to it, I'm suppressing an 8 inch barreled 556 AR, and is there even any point? Yes, a small one. Neofuds like to point out that the 556 cartridge needs to go fast to do damage, and they're right. But the cool thing about 556 is that it's always fast. This goofy little build, which I've lovingly christened the Shithouse Rat, is going to have a very short effective range. But that's true for most very short guns. The Shithouse Rat in 556 is going to hit harder at close range than a 9mm or 300 black subsonic build of the same size. It also shoots much softer than 300 black supers or 7.62x39 from a mini Draco. It is not quiet by any means. We've paired a very short suppressor with a very short barrel. So, yes, it is loud and has plenty of muzzle flash. Did your gun just flash in broad-ass Utah daylight? Sure did. Disgusting. But shooting this thing is very pleasant. The overall length is comparable to an unsuppressed 11.5, and it's more pleasant to the shooter than that by far. Loud! You are free to theorycraft your own POU for this, if you'd like. I'm not a big believer in bag guns or truck guns, personally. Even for home defense, I'll happily accommodate a few more inches of barrel. 
I used to build super short ARs to harvest performative outrage upvotes on Reddit, but now I think they might not actually be completely retarded. Not completely. Running a suppressor below the minimum barrel length restriction is pretty retarded though. We're putting excessive wear on a very expensive tube and voiding our warranty at the same time. Now, I don't believe that this setup is going to cause a catastrophic safety risk. It's not like putting an aluminum 22 suppressor on the end of a 5.56 gun because technically the hole is the same size. That is probably unsafe. That probably will destroy your suppressor in under, I don't know, a magazine? A 10 round magazine? After a couple hundred rounds on a barrel two inches shorter than what this suppressor is supposed to be able to handle, it doesn't show any signs of just randomly exploding. But we are actively racing towards the end of life for this baffle stack. Creaking metal. It's like a hot engine ticking over. Even with a tougher can like the Polo K, the smart thing to do is use a flash hider and a normal mount and just accept a bit of extra length. The Wolfpack recessed direct thread adapters make the most sense on longer guns, especially if you've got one of those very common setups like a 16 inch barrel with a 15 inch handguard or a 14.5 with a 13 inch handguard and so on. It might seem silly to obsess over half an inch here or a quarter of an inch there, but removing length and weight from the end of a gun is always nice. As for this build, well, it's an 8 inch barrel with a 7 inch handguard. A 7 inch handguard would overlap the threads slightly on a 7.5 inch barrel, or leave a lot of ugly exposed barrel with an 8 inch. I simply had to use the recessed direct thread to prevent this build from being hideous. My hands are tied here. Round's complete. All right, that's the show for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, check out the links in the video description. Subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I will see you next time. Hey, fat boy, what are you doing out here?